November and December release of Home Assistant have brought us a long-awaited change or improvement to shopping lists, or what is now called to-do lists. Now, finally, we can have more than one, but also we can integrate them with the internal, but also external services. We'll be looking at all of that in just a couple of seconds. Let's first start with uh, what the shopping list was and what to-do lists are. Shopping list was a very simple implementation of a to-do list or a shopping list, where, for example, you would create automations. I did create a video on it. You can check it out up here. And, for example, get notified when you reach the store. You would combine the shopping lists with the proximity sensors or location sensors, and then you would get that shopping list wherever you are or when the shopping list is needed. But unfortunately, the biggest limitation was that you can only have one and it was called shopping list. Well, that changed with the November and December release of Home Assistant. We now have something that is called to-do lists and previous shopping list integration has been renamed to to-do list or local to-do lists. There are actually two differences, the big differences between the to-do lists and shopping lists. Not all the things that you can do with the to-do list, you can do it with the shopping list, but that's a different story. For all of you that are still using shopping lists, let's check out what you have to do in your home assistant to convert them to the to-do lists. And it's quite easy. First of all, I would recommend that you go to developer tools, states, and type to do dot and see what to-do list you have. If you only had previously one and it was a shopping list, it should now be called to-do shopping list. This was the one that was imported or converted from the previous release of Home Assistant. Besides that, I have here additional to-do lists, but we will go through them later on when I show you how you can integrate this with, for example, Google Tasks or our groceries, which is the web app or mobile app, which my family is using to track our monthly, but also some other shopping lists. But now let's jump into Visual Studio Code or File Editor or whatever you are using to edit your YAML files and see what you have to do to convert from the previous shopping list services to new to-do list services. In my main setup, and I will be leaving a link, of course, once again to my GitHub repository because all of the files from my main setup are available free of charge to anyone that wants to browse it. I still have here the old services. Service is called shopping underscore list dot add underscore item and I'm adding washing machine pods to the shopping list but now we must convert this to the new to-do list and add item and one thing we have to specify here is something that previously was not necessary and that is the name of the list we will be using so let's start with the service instead of shopping list we have to specify to do add item this is the new service that we'll be using we need to add target it will be entity ID. And we need to specify here the name of the list where we want to add things. Once again, we will be adding it to our to-do shopping list. This is the one that was converted from the previous format. And next, instead of name, we have to specify here item. Since this is just a shopping list and not a normal to-do list, we cannot do anything else with it. We cannot specify, for example, due date, memo, etc., because shopping lists do not support that. But I mentioned that there is a difference between the shopping lists and to-do lists. Let's look at it here. We will use service to add item to to-do list. We will select here once again shopping list. Item can be sample item for recording. And this is all you need to specify for the shopping list. If you were to specify due date, 15th, and description, this is sample description and press call service it will fail because those attributes due date and description are not available for the shopping list but if i am to change this and select for example this one here this is imported a list from my google tasks and i add sample item for recording due date and description and call service it should pass because those attributes are available for the to-do lists why would you go for one or the other Shopping list is still simple list, and I really do recommend that you try to keep it as simple as possible. 
For the to-do lists, to-do lists already have some due dates or due times, they can have some memo, links included, etc. Those are more complex. By using this standard, Home Assistant enables you also to integrate this integration, the to-do list internal integration, with various services. Some of them, which I'll show you in a bit, are Google Tasks and our groceries. There are also others, for example, Picnic, but unfortunately this is only available if you're Dutch. While I would really love to have such a service available also here, it's not. So yeah, if you're not Dutch, you will not be able to use it. The next thing that you can also integrate with this to-do list is CalDAV. If you are using CalDAV or any supported services, it can either be local hosted or for example, your Apple account or whatever that supports that standard. But now let's look at what you need to do to integrate it with the Google Tasks. First of all, you need to have a Google account. The procedure for that is almost the same as all the other procedures you would have to do in Home Assistant if you would need to integrate with Google Mail, Google Assistant or similar. I will guide you to some of the steps but not everything because most of you already have some other Google service included. If not, everything is available in the documentation and once again the documentation for this integration will be down in the video description. As it says, prerequisite is that you need to configure developer credentials to allow Home Assistant to access your Google account. These credentials are the same as the ones used for Nest, Google Mail. These are not the same as device authorization credentials previously recommended for the Google Calendar. If you already have set up correct credentials, you can do step 1 and then skip to step 13 of the below instructions. In my case, I should already have the account there. I will click on Google Developers Console and I will enable Google Tasks API. Google Tasks API has now been enabled. We see the status enabled. On the OAuth consent screen, we have to check if the app is in the production or it's in the testing. For us, it's in production. Select here credentials. Click on create credentials. OAuth client ID. Application type will be web application. Name will be Home Assistant Google Tasks, so that we know what's going on here. Authorized redirect URI will be this one here. This is copied from the documentation from the integrations page. I will be leaving a link to the documentations page in the video description and press create. We will now see the client ID, client secret, creation date, status, is it enabled or not? And you can download JSON. I always download also JSON. So I have both backup for client ID and client secret. You can also copy them and click on OK. If you need to see them later on, just click on Edit or Out Client. This is this small pencil on the right side. Now in Home Assistant, go to Settings, Integrations, Add Integration, type Tasks for Google Tasks. The setup process will start. Give it a name and paste your OAuth client ID and client secret. And last step is to click on Add. After you click Add, you will be presented with the Choose Accounts because we still have to authorize everything here. Click on the mail address you are using, go to Advanced, click Open the URL, which it says is not safe. It asks you if you would like to allow the access, click on Continue and then make sure that this URL matches the URL of your Home Assistant. Click on Link Account. And this is it. We have now successfully added our Google Tasks and we also now have new to-do list. In Google Tasks, if you now add a new task, new task from GTasks, we can select a due date, let's say 16th of December at 7 p.m. We can add description or memo. This is GTask description and we can save it. This should now also be sent to our Home Assistant. Or for Home Assistant, we can also create task, choose entity, we will edit our GTask from Home Assistant. We will select due date, this Sunday, okay, description, Sample description from within Home Assistant, call service, and task has now been successfully created inside our Google Tasks. This one here. 
if we want to see the list of tasks, we would use get service to get the list of items. Let's stick with this one. And here is everything we have in our G tasks. If we go to to do lists, if we tick those two boxes, those will be moved to checked items and also moved to completed list. But let's talk about even better integration and that one is called our groceries. For that, you need to install the app on your mobile phone. The installation and the configuration process is very simple. There is only one quirk which I don't like about the app, but I don't consider this to be such a big problem for this application, but also this is something that I do not recommend that you usually do. The problem with this app is that you need to create account, single account that will be shared with the family. So in my case, I have installed the app, went to the settings, selected I want to join or create new list, type in my email, selected the password and created the list. Then I would need to share that same email and the same password to other family members. So a bit of security issue if you do not trust your family members. But thank God I do and what this app allows you, it allows you to create multiple lists. It also has functionality to scan barcode and that makes it easy to add items to your shopping cart. I have created a couple of shopping lists there. Then after you have installed the app, you have to go to integrations, type in our, select our groceries and finish the installation process. And you need to specify here this same email and the password that you used in the mobile app and click submit. In the list, we now have batteries, monthly groceries and shopping list that is pulled from our groceries app. If I add item here to the shopping list, T, this will be automatically synchronized to our groceries app. Here it is. I can add, for example, two boxes, click done and save that additional information in the app. Okay, now let's talk on how you can integrate everything inside Home Assistant or how you can use that in automations or other services that you are using. Let's look at two automations that I've been using for some time now. These are the dishwasher pods stock low and washing machine stock pods low. For this, I'm tracking the cycles for both my dishwasher and washing machine. Each time it ends the cycle, when it finishes cleaning up the dishes or washing the clothes, it triggers and decreases number of pods that are left in a box. When this numeric helper drops to below 10, I trigger the automation for both washing machine and dishwashers to add item to shopping list, either dishwasher or washing machine pods. If we go to to-do lists, check my shopping list, we can see that it is empty. In my configuration panel, you can see that I have currently 11 dishwasher pods and 11 washing machine pods. That means that if the number decreases under 10, I will receive notification on my watch, mobile phone, but also it will be added to to-do lists. Same thing goes for the washing machine pods. If I decrease it to below 10, I receive notification on my watch, my mobile phone, but also it is adding to the to-do lists. We have dishwasher pods and we have washing machine pods. Okay, let's look at some other services that are available. For example, if I tick those two items, they are now completed, but they stay in the list. What you can do to remove them? You can either do it manually or you can create automation that would be run, for example, each day at midnight at five o'clock in the morning and that would run the following service. Let's go to developer tools, services, select to do and use this remove all completed to-do list items. Select list you want to clear. In our case, this is built-in shopping list and call service. After you call it, the shopping list will be empty. You see here that I have batteries shopping list. Unfortunately, Still, Home Assistant doesn't know or doesn't pull anywhere information about what type of batteries your devices are using. And I will show you something, but it will actually not help you to show that same information on the shopping list, but it can help you with tracking what type of batteries you need to add to your shopping list. If you go to HSCS, Integrations, Explore and Download, Type Battery, there is integration that is called Battery Notes. Click on it, download it. At the time of the recording, the latest version is version 1.0.1 .1, and click download. Since this is HACS integration, you would now need to restart your home assistant. After you restarted it, let's check what you can do with it. Here in this recording setup, I've already set a couple of devices with battery notes. 
These are the devices I'm tracking. For example, Akara temperature sensor is using CR2032. This is the Tuya temperature sensor. This one is using AA batteries. You can, for example, add also numbers. So it would be AA and in the brackets 2. This TRV, this is the Tado TRV, is using AA batteries and so on and so on. How would you add devices here? You would go to add device, select device from the list, for example, ERCF T1. This is ERCF T1 temperature, so that I know what sensor this is. And battery type is AAA batteries. As I mentioned, you can, for example, add in brackets numbers, so I know that I need to buy two AAA batteries and click submit. You can select an area and finish. Unfortunately, this is a manual task. That means that for each battery that you have in your household, you need to add battery type to home assistant. It would be awesome if this information would be attribute because attributes we can easily pull together with the battery percentage and push in our home assistant. So what can you do with the batteries? I will be leaving a link in the description of the video for script I'm using. There are a lot of blueprints that you can use to track the battery status or the battery levels and receive notification when the batteries are low. Unfortunately, battery percentages with the devices they report are not accurate. For example, some devices can go in negative values with the status of the batteries, others show you 50% and they're actually dead. So you have to be careful and there is no easy solution for that. But there is one automation I'm using. And as I said, the code for it will be in the video description. If I go to settings, automations, I have test automation and it looks like this. When template changes from false to true, and I run this here, it checks all the states for all the devices that have attribute device class equal battery. And if the state is between zero and 20%, that means that the battery is low. And then this is triggered or set to true. Then I run the to do, I'm adding item to shopping list. And then I run this here, once again, going through all the devices that have device class battery, state of the sensor is under 20% and push all of those names in the shopping list. Let's run this. And if we go to the to-do lists, shopping lists, we see here that we have information for one, two, three devices. Two of them are at 1% and the other one is unknown because it's already dead. With the recent improvements in Home Assistant, and I'm really hoping that there will be additional improvements in the future, you can do a lot, a lot of things. For example, you can create to-do lists that are triggered automatically to add fixes for some items in your log files. If there is an error, trigger it and add to to-do list this error code and try to fix it. If the temperature is falling below whatever degrees centigrade or Fahrenheit, move plants from the outside to indoors to keep them from freezing. Or vice versa, if the temperature goes above certain values, move plants from within your home out into the garden, balcony or whatever you have. There are a ton of ideas that you can do and I really would like to hear your ideas for what you are using or for what you will be using either to-do list or shopping list. Also, are you using CalDAV? Have you tried it with Home Assistant and how do you like the integration between Home Assistant and CalDAV servers? Whatever idea you have, don't forget to drop me a line either here in the video comment section, Twitter or on the Discord server. And I really would like to hear your ideas and thoughts. And before I wrap up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, commented, subscribed or shared my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. You can go to my merchandise store and get something there or you can get me a super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.